This is America's caffeinated plant, and yet I think it's the most underappreciated caffeinated drink. Thousands of years ago, it was traded all over North America. I'm exploring it now to see if we should all be replacing our caffeinated beverages with this plant. Wherever you look, there's so much caffeine in this forest. It's amazing. Yeah, they've been using it probably for as long as there were people here. And the science and scientists that study it showed me why it went out of favor and how we can now bring it back. It's good. You're born holy, grown wild and free in the southern heat where it likes to If you like foraging for food that's free and you like caffeine and you like making things that are healthy for you, probably better than the caffeine you're already drinking, and you live anywhere from Florida to Texas to Delaware, then you need to look no further than this plant, Yopon holly. It's one of the dominant understory plants here. I've been in Florida for the last year trying to help landowners utilize this amazing area that they live in by making videos about the plants and animals. I recently burned and he's gonna fill us in. It looks like this. Very important. This plant, Yopon holly, stood out to me because so few people know about the amazing benefits of this plant, its historical use, and the fact that it could be their daily caffeine source. And thanks to my friend Yuri, a world-renowned entomologist here at the University of Florida, he connected me to the guru. We have the world's expert here on Yopon Holly. He won't say so. This is Yopon Holly, right this there. Is, this is Yopon Holly, but this was the one that had the highest caffeine content. It's the only native caffeine producing plant in North America. Turns out he was part of a team of scientists that were studying this plant for another project. And then they ran it through their mass spectrometer and discovered that not only did it have the caffeine we knew about, but it had all sorts of other compounds like theobromine and a ton of antioxidants. And he explained that even though it's not super common now, it was the caffeinated plant in the Americas. Thousands of years ago, um, it was traded all over North America. There were people who were presumably paddling up the Mississippi River with bags of Yaupon. And the big question is why aren't we using this as much today as we used to? Yaupon was a very important daily beverage just like yerba mate is now in the southern cone. It's a close relative, very similar chemistry. More of you probably know about yerba mate. It's in the same genus, Ilex. But unlike yerba mate, some unfortunate events in our history made it an unpopular drink. Yaupon became associated with poor people and Amerindians. So it seems it was partly because of a historical popularity contest in branding. You can literally just go into the woods and pick this, so it wasn't rare, and thus, not cool to drink. I think that is all changing though as the popularity of native plants and foraging native things come back into favor. Something to put on your radar, you can look it up, Yopon Holly. Wow. In fact, in health food stores, you can buy stuff like this. It's the fanciest thing in the store. But there is still one funny thing about this plant. The name is Ilex vomitoria, and that alone makes it kind of hard to market. Got its reputation and its name, Ilex vomitoria, from a ceremony called the Black Drink Ceremony, practiced by the Timucuans and adopted by the Seminoles after them, and recorded by early ethnographers who came to the area. In the black tea ceremony, they'd take yopon, crush the leaves, and extract what we would have as a tea, but boil it down until it became a black syrup. Before important events like wars or harvests, there would be a ritual consumption of this highly concentrated extract of yopon. Often it was accompanied by fasting and sleep deprivation for several days. They would fill their bellies with it and then vomit. Caffeine is an emetic. That concentration of caffeine, it's no surprise that they would vomit. It was ritual vomiting. Ritual vomiting happens all over the world. I mean, this is something that people do to cleanse themselves. The Anglo-Saxon chroniclers were horrified by this, you know, because they had lost that. In fact, the major distributors of this tea were so concerned that the name would be a problem for consumers that they all banded together, stating that the name was degrading in some way to the people who originally used it in ceremony. Botanists, however, who create these names were not convinced, and so that name still sticks around. But it's important to remember that this ceremonial drinking of the tea was not always how it was consumed. They had it as a daily beverage too. They called it the white tea drink and they would uh, whip it. And so it had a froth to it. I have Yaupon daily. It's mm. amazing. And 
as opposed to coffee where you have a rush of mm -hmm. awareness and productivity and then you have a crash and I want to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't have that after your pawn. I've always wondered if it was the balance between the alkaloids. Now let's talk about the different alkaloids, polyphenols and saponins found in this plant. Theobromine and caffeine are the most popular. They are central nervous system stimulants and energy boosters. Caffeine also contains an antioxidant activity. Additionally, you have theophylline, which is an anti-inflammatory agent and is used for management of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Theocrine has anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties. Polyphenols like chlorogenic acid have antibacterial activity and also an anti-obesity and anti-diabetic effect. Flavanols like rutin, camphorol, and quercetin have cardioprotective activities and chemopreventative effects. Finally, saponin is great as an antioxidant and an antimicrobial. Of course, the magic, so to speak, is that these compounds stack together, making it ideal for mental and physical health. I know some of you now are gonna be worried about identification. You're looking for a little shrub with little leaves about that big that are alternate on the stem. You see how they alternate? One, two, three, four, right there. Each individual leaf is not smooth on the edges. It's just a little bit wavy. Can't go into the full identification in a video like this because it can get a little bit boring. I would, however, suggest you go to iNaturalist. You can take your phone out, you can scan a leaf, and it will do a pretty good job of telling you are you looking at Yopon Holly? You could also do a search for where have other people spotted Yopon Holly. We found a location on the map out here on the beach and we went out and filmed a little bit more of it. I'm gonna take a quick pause in the middle here. If you feel a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that Yopon Holly is something that seems good for you, but it's out here in the wild and gosh, that's gonna be hard to collect it and dry it and do what you need. I might wanna recommend something like Magic Mind. I take this in the mornings, it tastes amazing. This has green tea, very similar plants. I'm a huge advocate of improving your diet to improve your mental health and just general well-being. I'm going through a lot of the ingredients in here over the next several months. I would encourage you to try some of this out if you want. There's a special discount code down below. Hopefully you get as much benefit out of it as I do. Okay. Back to Yopon Holly. Now, let me show you how to make Yopon tea. Of course, this whole process is really easy. It's almost not worth showing. Harvesting Yopon, you go to a branch and you, you strip the branch off and then you take the Spanish moss out and, and then you have the leaves. Basically, you can either put them in the oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, or you can fry them on a little skillet like this. This helps break down the cell walls and allows the compounds to then get into the tea. Now you have the dry leaves. When they're dry, you crush it up and you add it to a drink with hot water, just like a green tea. Now my take on all this is that it seems better than coffee, not just for the compounds in it, but definitely from an ecological standpoint. You grow coffee mostly in areas that are deforested and certainly tea, you go in and you clear cut a montane forest, bulldoze it, and then you plant tea. So that's a tragedy from an environmental standpoint. And then you put it on a ship, you transport it halfway around the world, and you package it, and impact on the environment is very substantial. In contrast, going out into your yard, and I mean it because it's such a common cultivated shrub, and stripping off some leaves, you know, it takes a couple, a big handful to make a, a good um, cup of tea, but the plant responds and, and, it, and it's not a problem. It's quite robust and no shipping, no packaging. And plus you're there in nature doing something. And that's just such a wonderful thing in this time of concrete and sterile landscapes. But because this grows both in the wild and as a cultivated shrub, there's potential that it could work its way into the suburbs. I think the only thing stopping everyone from using Yopon Holly is that we still retain this fear of harvesting wild foods. I also think we hold on to this idea that nature is out there and we're here and we should absolutely not touch it. Because if you keep that mentality, this separation of nature, then you can't enjoy this connection we could be having with the nature all around us. It is such an easy way to have a ceremony with nature. I hope now you are convinced to try, at the very least, Yopon tea. And if you're a landowner in the south, in other words, you own some sort of land anywhere where this is found, 
then maybe you could have it on your property and you could harvest tea every day. How cool would that be? I hope this doesn't sound like an ad for Yopon tea. Sometimes I get really excited about new things that I find, the ingredients that are in it. I read about the studies that talk about how healthy it is for you and then all of a sudden I'm an advocate and I'm trying to convince everyone to do it. I am being supported at the moment uh, as the sponsor of this series by Magic Mind. I will be actually going through all of the ingredients in here which have health benefits, uh, all of them supported by science. I'm very excited about being sponsored by a company who believes in health and diet. We're going to be diving into the health benefits of all of these different plants um, and mushrooms and different nutrients that you could be adding to your diet for over the next year probably. So I'm very excited about that. So we'll see you in another video, maybe in the woods one day. If you live anywhere where I Like to Vomitoria is grown, you can have it on your property. I'm doing videos specifically for Florida landowners at myfloridaforest.land, but you can extrapolate that to pretty much the whole southeast and sometimes the eastern deciduous forest. Check out the other videos. They are resources for landowners. I'm very excited to share them, and I hope you get a lot out of them too.